Rebuilding a Bernack Vulcan model steam toy part 15. Returning to this project after a gap in the series, I am making the parts for this super Vulcan boiler. The manufacturer is a bit over the top, but hopefully the end result will justify the means. The original boiler shell is on the left, the new one is on the right, and is a considerable improvement. In this episode, I am machining the center flue. You may be wondering why I paused the series. Well, it was quite simple, I had too much work on. And a job like this is definitely a labour of love. The new boiler that I'm making will resemble the old one, but it will be a bit of an improvement. The boiler shell is much thicker at 16 gauge, and the cap of the boiler and the part that fits inside are made from gunmetal. This new boiler will also be silver soldered together, not soft soldered and it's going to be fitted with a proper water gauge, which has a blow-down valve. Originally, I was going to use this piece of copper tube for the centre flue, but I thought it was a bit thin, so I'm going to make one from phosphor bronze. With the exception of this piece of copper pipe, you can see how over the top the internal components are. This is the chimney that sat on top of what once was the original centre flue. At this stage, I would like to say that these components do not need to be as robust as they are. I just thought I would try it and see how it worked out. Once I've finished this boiler, I will give it a proper hydraulic test to make sure it's pressure tight. These two pieces of gunmetal are going nowhere. They are very strong. Behind the piece of copper tube is a piece of phosphor bronze that I'm going to machine to make a new center flue. One end of it will be reduced in diameter to fit inside the original chimney. And the length of this, according to my ruler, is about half an inch. The next part of the operation is to machine this piece of phosphor bronze to become a very successful and very strong centre flue. Over now to my trusty old Boxford lathe and the first thing to do is face across the end. You will notice that when I finish the facing operation, I move the tool away from the work, I don't drag it back across the work, which generally causes rings to form. The next part of the job is very routine. I'm centre drilling the end of the piece of bar. You can't see it very clearly because the camera's not in the right place. Note to self, make a new camera mount for the Boxford. Once I've centre drilled the end, I turn the piece of bar around in the chuck. This piece of phosphor bronze is easy to machine and it's also very strong, so I can turn it around in the chuck and hold it by the part that I need to cut off, the chucking piece. The first thing I need to do is reduce the overall diameter so it fits in the top cap and the piece that fits down inside the boiler tube. I'm using a round nose tool for this and it was a problem when I used it on cast iron, but it's not a problem at all with this phosphor bronze. The tool is actually the wrong hand, but I use it because I can move the tool post out of the way and get a clearer shot with the camera. The finish I'm getting straight from the cutting tool is really not bad at all. It doesn't have to be perfect because this component will be inside the boiler and will be never seen again once it's silver soldered in position. If I left this video running at normal speed, it would be incredibly long. So once again, as usual, even though some people don't like it, I'm running at 400%, just to get through the job in a reasonable time. This cutting tool sticks out from the tool post a long way, and that's possibly why it leaves rings on the work. All the better to grip the silver solder. I try the firebox end in place, and it's a perfect fit. But I need to extend the reduced diameter so it's level with the end of the firebox plate. To be honest, the holes in the cap and the firebox plate are not exactly the same. This was a mistake when I machined them, and I will machine each end to fit the individual plate. The main diameter of the entire centre flue is not the same as the holes in the plates. Each of the ends are turned slightly undersized to fit in the plates, and the reason for not turning it all the way is I don't want the plate to slide down the flue when I'm silver soldering it. This is still a little bit tight, so I'm going to use some emery cloth to reduce the end slightly. 
It's really important that the silver solder penetrates the joint. It's no good having a compression fitting where you squeeze the part into position and put a fillet of silver solder around the edge. The silver solder does need to penetrate all the way down the entire joint. Once I've finished the turning all the way down, I parted it off. And here, still using the parting tool, I'm cleaning up the end. This short parting tool is quite a good turning tool, one of the better ones that I've got. It gives a very good finish and cuts very squarely. What I'm doing here is machining the end so it's a nice loose fit in the firebox plate. I also turn part of the plate a little bit oversized. This will allow silver solder to flow into it and make an even stronger joint. This won't be a centre flue until I've drilled a hole down the centre of it. It's not a good idea to use a large drill bit because it only goes down as far as the centre drill. Then it suddenly becomes very hard to penetrate and gets extremely hot. A better way to do it is to start the drilling operation with a much smaller twist drill. I need to drill this flue from both ends because the other end has to be reduced so the chimney fits on top of it and if I push this drill all the way through there won't be any metal left for the chimney to sit on. So having drilled almost all the way through with the large drill bit I turn the part around in the chuck and now I'm turning the register for the chimney. At this stage using my micrometer I thought it was a good idea to measure the original flue onto which the chimney pushes. After doing this, I turned the end of the flue to the correct diameter so the chimney pushed onto it. And the length of this, just as the original measurement, is half an inch. I now need to drill in from the other end, and it's the same principle as you've just seen, I'm using a smaller drill bit first. Followed by a drill bit that's not as big as the one that I used at the other end, but I need the part to have sufficient strength to support the chimney. If I drill it too thin, it could go wrong, especially during the silver soldering operation. Here I'm continuing the drilling operation until the drill breaks through into the existing hole somewhere inside the flue. That's looking okay, I have the correct diameter for the chimney and also for each of the plates that fit on the flue. And that's about it, everything fits as it's supposed to do, the next part of the job involves cutting the boiler shell on the left to the same dimensions as the shell on the right. You can see how much thicker the new shell is when you compare it to the old one. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.